So why did the black Jews, why did the Jews of the time of Jesus, Yeshua, why did they betray? In other words, why did they, as a group, betray the Moshiach for the Roman Caesar? Why would they say that they have no king? You understand? They have no, no king but Caesar. When we can explain that question accurately and historically, we can also understand why they have also failed to recognize Haile Selassie the first. It's, it's basically one. It's, it's, it's one and the same. It's one and the same. It's one and the same truth. This is one and the same same truth because it says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it's the same rootage. It has the same rootage and the same truth even today. So we're going to continue with this portion of our teaching and of our reasoning of why, 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 what's a woe. Because many of the disciples, they were disillusioned. You know how easy it is for black folks, for Negroes, especially this particular black people in the Americas and the Caribbean to become disillusioned. You understand? To lose hope. You understand? And to be misdirected by their religious authorities, by their pastors and preachers. The same thing was going on in the time of Jesus Christos of Yeshua. They wanted a Messiah who would overthrow the Roman government. That's what they were looking for. They were looking for a Messiah that would basically go head to head with the Roman authority would go head-to-head -head with the forces of Augustus Caesar and would take over. And through that show and display of force in a kind of a Davidic way, would become king over Israel. But unfortunately, brothers and sisters, it didn't, it didn't quite happen that way. We see a correspondence also in his imperial majesty with this basic psychological principle embedded in the true Jewish or black Hebrew people. Now, that being a fact, let's just continue and conclude right here with this mystery of iniquity, this mystery of rebellion, which the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, it says, for the mystery of iniquity and they have a G here in the Schofield. And let's see where this G leads to. Um, this G to the center margin and see what is linked with this particular um, G. Um, lawlessness. It says lawlessness, which means rebellion. You understand? Rebellion. You understand? Rebellion. Going opposite the law of God, which is Torah, is rebellion. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And now let us give the revelation of that wicked who was revealed. Now we have Caesar Augustus at the time of the true Jesus Christ. And then we have there be a dispensation of time. Right? A dispensation, the Roman Empire, later will become the Holy Roman Empire. The original images were still black, uh, preserved in the catacombs of Rome. But then they would have the iconoclasty phase where they would whitewash, so forth and so on. And then we get the Renaissance, and then we get these sort of images, such as the blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus. So we see that the mystery of iniquity was at work. Paul saw this coming. Paul saw that because they rejected the true Moshiach, and they said we had no king but Caesar, he already understood that the Romans were worshiping themselves as gods and worshiping false gods, and now the Roman emperor like Caesar Augustus also wanted to be deified. He wanted the Senate to call him a god. And then we have in, in Hebrew biblical history leading up to 70 AD, we have where they put the the statue of the Roman Caesar in the holy place and wanted the Jews to worship it, and they revolted. And this is where 
we have the Jewish revolts, which eventually led to 70 A.D., and that conclusion of that part of our past story or history. So it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord, whom Adonai, shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness, the brightness of his coming. This is the real so-called illumination. You understand? This is the real illumination that, that this one would be destroyed by this one. And we are in the phases of the spiritual warfare, but as as the Bible teaches us right here, it says that the Lord shall, Adonai, shall consume with what? The spirit of his mouth. Not with guns and bullets and bombs and genetic uh, weapons or harp or any. No, with the what? With the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the what? The brightness of his coming. The reality of this is going to be so blinding to those who worship the false god, the wicked, which has been revealed, which was revealed, which that mystery was already at work. This is why they call it Mystery Babylon. And Mystery Babylon is connected with what? With Rome. And we already know what old Rome was about. And it says, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And this is the very example that we get of this white Jesus. See, some people get offended when we say white Jesus. That's the reality of it. That's to remind you that Jesus is black. You understand? But is this, is this one whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Remember what Revelation says? That he will cause the image to, to, to live. See, before they had the painting, now they have these Jesus movies with the same false, counterfeit, whitewashed Jesus, the same image. Now they have actors, you understand, Jim Caviezel and others, you understand, that actually bring this image to life. You understand? Some would say, well, it's about the message. Well, just give the message without these false images. You know these images are false. You know this is Caesar. This is Caesar. This is Caesar's Christ. This is Cesare, Cesare, Borgia, Borgia. Look him up. Look up his father. Yeah. We should ask, really, the question is, Olden, Walden, actually, Pope Alexander the Sixth is Pope Alexander VI Santa Claus? After all, this is his son. This is his son. When you talk about Christmas, you start talking about Santa Claus. So that must be the father of this one. They're both white guys. What's going on here? You see, they take offense to it, but the truth is an offense, but it's not a sin because it says right here, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not what? They, they didn't receive, they didn't cabal or what? They did not receive the love of the truth. You see, because when we want to talk to them about this white Jesus is not Jesus. It's not him. He was not white. We can discuss doctrine, but take this false image down. Don't, don't keep forcing this false image. And the reason why they accept it is because when they look at it, it's like looking at themselves. So they, though they know it's not the truth. But when we understand the mystery of iniquity, that this so-called Jesus is not Jesus, but is a guy named Caesar. It's a guy named Caesar. Ain't that something? It's a guy named Caesar. So basically the same thing that they had did over here, the same thing they did here, they did there. Do you see the mystery that Paul was saying that was already at work? The mystery of iniquity, which... Which was already, which was already at work, you understand? And there would be a certain time, a dispensation, so that, as I Claudius said, all the poisons that lurk in the mud can hatch out, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. 
that they truly might be saved. They think that these, these so-called um, sinner's prayer, that's not from the Bible. They made that up. The real sinner's prayer is the, remember the man who couldn't look up? unlike the Pharisee, and he said, forgive me, Lord, I'm, I'm a sinner. Forgive me, Lord, have mercy on me, Lord, I'm a sinner. That's a sinner's prayer right there. But see, it's not about the abundance of words. It's really about the intent of, 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 of heart and mind that's important there. But they give you all these meaningless words, and then they put this image in front of you and say it's all right. They don't have no problem. They talk about the Egyptians this and the Egyptians that and the next thing Egyptians. Well, who worshipped the Egyptians? The Romans. And the Romans were worse idolaters. But you never, ever hear them talk about the Romans. In the whole documentary, do you hear anything about the Romans? Almost, I heard nothing about the Romans. But they're showing this, this Roman Catholic image, and then they'll try to tell us that Roman Catholics are not Christian. So why are you still using their image? Why are you still using their image? Because they have not received the love of the truth. That's a deep verse right there. They have not received the love of the truth. Think about that. They have not received. Imagine if you have not received the love of the truth. You might have received the truth. You might have received the truth, you know, or, you know, or heard the truth at least. But you did not receive the love of the truth. See, when we're telling them the truth, they get offended. You know what I'm saying? They say we're being racist because we're saying that the white Jesus is a counterfeit, a fraud, a lie. It's the very antichrist that the Bible speaks about. So now we, we're caught, in a sense, between like a so-called rock and a hard place. So we're caught between there are two extremes. There's left and right. And Christ said, don't go to the left or the right. On one side, we have the the whitewash New Ages, in other words, the, the, the new white supremacists, right? And on the other side, we have the old white supremacists who say that this old slave drive and slave massa capitalistic system is, ju is just all right. Black people are not, there's no problem. There's no problem as we exploit black people in Africa and slavery. That's, that was no problem. You understand? And, just two, two more verses right here, and for this cause. What cause is that? Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, Ha Elohim, the true God, get this, brothers and sisters, shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You see, there's other videos that also quote these words from Scripture, and they have a lot of fancy um, video techniques and effects and all of that, right? But then they'll flash these Jesus pictures on you as though it's the real thing. And sometimes when we watch it, we laugh to ourselves. We say, wow, the Scripture is true, because the Scripture is talking about these very same pictures they have in front of, front of us. But these, they don't see it. You know, we say, how come they don't get it? They're talking about the New World Order, the cultics, worshiping demons. What do you think you're worshiping when you worship this guy, when you worship Caesar Borgias? <laughs> because what does the word say? And for this cause, what cause? Because they received not the love of the truth. They heard some truth here. They heard some truth there. But they didn't receive love. They didn't really love the truth. Come what may, love the truth. They didn't. So therefore, they're damned. If they're not saved, then they're damned. And all those who worship the image of the beast, that's what we have now in Revelation, going along with what Paul says here in Thessalonians, are damned, are damned. Well, we could say another word. It's a four-letter word, but you, 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 you get the idea. Mm -hmm. Because they're fornicating under the crown of the king of kings. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should, not would, not maybe, but should, you should believe a lie, that they should believe a lie. So most of them, when they think about Jesus, this is the guy they see. You understand? Know this is the guy they see in their mind's eye when they think about Jesus Christ. But, you know, how ironic, how ironic it is. You understand? They see that guy in their mind's eye 
when really it's about this man. It's about this man. Mm -hmm. Meditate on these things, if you will. But let's go to the next verse. It says, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. See, they don't want to believe the truth that Jesus is black. And, you know, a lot of this is really simpler than a lot of people make it, make it out to be because they're not really, they don't, they, don't, they don't receive the love of the truth. They don't have a love of the word. Once they get a love of the word, you understand, and ready, to, ready for whatever the truth is, they're ready for it. They're not going to cringe when the truth is coming forward, but they're going to receive it. Just like we sit down, watch all these movies, Jesus apologists, so forth and so on, and some of them have a couple of things in it that are correct, that are true, but then they still are caught up on these images. They never, ever get it. Why don't they get it? The Bible tells us. Because God has sent on them strong delusion. Why? Because they didn't believe the love, they, 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 they didn't receive the love of the truth. So they're believing a lie, the whitewash, blonde hair, blue-eyed lie, dream a lie, that they all might be damned. Didn't we say they were going to be damned? That they all might be damned. Why are they going to be damned? You know what I'm saying? Because they're worshiping Antichrist, the blonde hair, blue-eyed Jesus. They're worshiping the goat, the goat on the left, and they can't go to the right. They can't go to the right with the sheep, the, the woolly hair. You understand? Because they refuse the woolly hair because deep in them is still that genetic racism. See, that, that racism has gone so deep it becomes genetic. And they receive the love of the truth and they receive Christ as he is. First and foremost, as a black man, not every single black man out there, unfortunately, but him himself as a black man. Wasn't he a Jew? Didn't Tacitus, the Roman historian, say the Jews were of the race of who? Of the Ethiopians, of the black race. This is why when we hear about Christianity in the early first century moving into certain Roman areas and people left alone the gods, you know, like they left alone the gods like this guy, you understand, to worship the true son of God. You see, because Caesar and the rest of them was calling themselves sons of God. Go back and study your history. Let's show you, show you this again in case you're seeing this vid right here. Let's show you the cover of this book right here. This book is The Worship of Augustus Caesar. The Worship. You see that right there? The Worship of Augustus Caesar which still goes on under the form of Cesare Borgia, under this, under this image right here, Cesare, Cesarea or Cesarea or Caesar Borgia, Borgia, the worship of Augustus Caesar, derived from a study of coins, monuments, calendars, eras, eras in the sense of, of ages and times, and astronomical and astrological cycles. It says right here, the whole establishing a new chronology and survey of history and religion by Alexander Del Mar. Alexander, I think, of the sea, if I'm correct with my Latin, of the sea. The worship of Augustus Caesar. I just want to make sure you see this right here because they know, they know about this. So how interesting that the Jesus image, the popularized Jesus image that they worship and that they use to deceive, hoodwink, and bamboozle people, actually it was, was styled on a man named, Augustus, a man named Caesar. In other words, a man named Caesar becomes the image of the world Jesus Christ. Doesn't that explain how the whole world was deceived? Exactly what we have here in Thessalonians, where it says, the one who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. You go into their churches and you look around the stained glass churches, especially the old cathedrals, you look up, you see the same white boy sitting up there. He's sitting up there, way high. They have him way so that you can't even, if you don't have good eyes and have good spectacles, you probably can't even see really clearly, but he's way up there. Who, well, who's that? Oh, that's Jesus up there. 
You see the light coming through there? Sun God? Yeah, uh-huh. So just to conclude this, brothers and sisters, the exhortation and instruction is this right here. It says, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of Adonai, because God, Jah, hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification. That means, that means being set apart, kedisana, of the spirit, of the manifest, and belief or faith or amen of the truth. You see, that explains right there that process. From the beginning, you were chosen for salvation through sanctification, which means to be set apart as the Nazarite vow. And you see, the true Christ has the Nazarite has the Nazarite locks. You understand? The true Christ, not that guy. Why he come up so? Because he's always setting himself. Want to set himself up higher? But let's let's bring him down more to his real spiritual size, you understand? And let's emphasize the, a more accurate image of the Christ, you understand? A more accurate image of the Christ. Whereunto he called you by our gospel, by our good news, even the good news of the King of Kings, Kedemawi Haile Selassie and his Christ, to the obtaining of the glory of Getachin Jesus Christos. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. I just say stand firm. Hold the traditions which ye have been taught, the examples that you have been taught, which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle or our um, didache, Didache, our teaching letter, the letters, the epistles were didache. They, they were teaching letters as we're coming forward with the Ethiopic didascalia. I'll keep you in touch, brothers and sisters, about that. That's the apostolic constitutions and the true ancient church order. It's a beautiful, simple, biblical reference work that the early church built its foundation on from the time of the Ethiopian eunuch up until the time of Kedemawi Haile Selassie, Nagusa Neges, in, 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 in the sense of the systemic system of the church. Now, because the apostasy has crept in here and there, we have to be even more circumspect. But now our Adonai, Gietachin, Adonai, Yeshua HaMoshiach himself, Arasu, and God, even our Father, which have loved us, and have given us everlasting or eternal consolation and good hope. We have good expectation. Let's let's clear this right here for a moment. Let's let's clear some of this right here. Just so we concluded because you know we already dealt with these individuals. Let's send them. Let's send them down. Let's send them down off off world off screen. You understand? And hopefully it'll be as It'll be just like this in that time to come, and let's bring let's bring this up, and let us put this side by side, so one can get a good visual rep uh, representation, a good visualization right here. Now, of course, when they see us with these sort of um, pictures, they'll say, "Oh, they're worshiping pictures." But let me put the blonde hair, blue-eyed Caesar. You understand? We have no Caesar. We have Christ. We're not like those those Judas Iscariot so called black Jews, those Uncle Tom Negroes who say Masa, Masa, Masa. We say the Moshiach, Jesus Christos, Yeshua Ha Moshiach. Now Getachin, Jesus Christos himself and God Egizyabihir, Jah, even our father, Abba Kadus which have loved us and have given us eternal consolation. We have eternal consolation. Meditate upon what that means. Look up consolation. St study this, my brothers and sisters. Study the scriptures. Study and show yourself approved. Go into these words in their biblical context. And good hope, which is good expectation, not bad hope, or not Bob hope, but good hope through grace, through grace, 
This is a spiritual matter. Comfort your hearts and establish you. Establish yourselves in every good word, every word that is good, and work. My brothers and sisters, we're going to we're going to um, pick up on this particular point as we go forward, and we pray that this has been educational or at least inspiring ones to do their own study, you understand, to study and to show themselves approved. And we just want to, before we close out and seek to do this, a little bit more, so we're going to go to Numbers chapter 6 just to give a blessing to our brothers and sisters, um, and where it says, uh, verse 22, to the end it says, and, and, and Jah spake to Moses, saying, speak to Aaron and to his son, saying, on this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying to them, Yahweh bless thee and keep thee, and Gziabir make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. And Gziabir lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee salam. Shalom, Rastafari. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Until we meet again, brothers and sisters, and reason again, Shalom Rastafari.